بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي سمو الشيخ حامد بن زايد آن هيان سمو الشيوخ أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الضيوف الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اسمحوا لي بداية بالتعريف عن نفسي أخوكم الدكتور مشعل القاسمي الرئيس التنفيذي لكل من مستشفى التأهيل التخصصي كابتل هيلث ومركز هيلث شيلد الصحي يشرفني اليوم أن أتولى مهمة إدارة هذا الحوار الذي يتمحور حول المسار المستقبلي للتكنولوجيا في مجال الطب والرعاية الصحية حيث ستقوم الدكتورة كاثرين مور رئيسة مؤسسة انتويتف فاونديشن بتقديم محاضرة بعنوان الاتجاهات التكنولوجية الجديدة في مجال الصحة وستقوم من خلالها باستعراض رؤيتها وأفكارها بهذا المجال ألفت لعنايتكم الكريمة بأن المحاضرة ستكون باللغة الإنجليزية وبإمكانكم استخدام السماعات لمتابعة الترجمة الفورية اسمحوا لي الآن بأن أتحدث باللغة الإنجليزية Your Highnesses, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen It brings me great honor to introduce a pioneer in medicine, Dr. Catherine Moore, President of the Intuitive Foundation Dr. Moore has combined her deep knowledge and expertise in engineering, technology, and medicine to advance the healthcare landscape. Her lecture today, titled Charting New Paths in Healthcare Technologies, will offer us insights into the bright future in healthcare and the transformational impact of technology on the healthcare system. Next, I will invite you and, and the audience for a few questions and answers. Um, the first question for you, Dr. Catherine, um, any new idea or product at one point needs funding in order to make it to fruition. How can, you, how can the investor community add value to healthcare technology? Well, there's so many different ways in which we can do investment, um, you know, from venture capital to doing uh, government investment for larger populations to things like philanthropic investment that I'm doing. And I think they each have their own niche. And you know, we need to think about with venture, can I get a return on investment? With government programs, how am I best benefiting my, the population? And in the areas of philanthropy, I'm using it to focus on, can we build new thought infrastructure associated with it? There are so many rich problems out there um, that all of these areas of investment are needed and they can move it forward in synergy with one another. Another question I have, I mean, looking at technology, it's moving at such a rapid speed that eventually there's a lag between uh, regulations, policies, and governance. Mm -hmm. What can regulators do to ensure that the technology is not only effective, but is actually safe and secure, especially in medicine where privacy is a big, a big issue? Yeah, that's always an interesting thing to take on because as an innovator, classically you're expected to rail against um, regulators, you know, like, oh, they're keeping us back. But really what regulators are doing is they're trying to keep this impossible balance between promoting the public health, which means bringing out new things as rapidly as they can, and protecting the public health, which is slowing down bringing things out because maybe it might not be fully safe. And so I think the key thing that we can do as innovators and people who are trying to push the envelope is to keep those dialogues going with regulators, but also for both groups to think, we're going to bring it out in a limited way. And instead of creating all the data before we come out, let's continue to gather data after it's come out and see if we see safety signals later. And I think in that way, we can be both nimble and safe. But it requires real conversation between innovators and, uh, and regulators and recognizing that we really are all on the same side. As you know, the UAE leverages technology almost in all of its sectors, and uh, healthcare is one of them, and is in the forefront in that field. What advice will you give the healthcare sector to keep in mind moving forward in order to maintain and remain in the front line for the next 20 years? Mm -hmm. Well, and it's 
like I said, just the pace of growth here is astonishing. And, and I can see that kind of continuing as it's going forward. And to, to continue to stay relevant, I think it's always thinking in terms of closing that gap. So when you're evaluating a new technology and you're saying, do we want to invest, do we want to add this into our healthcare system? Is it, it's not, is it bright and shiny and it has some new bells and whistles, but will it increase access? Will it increase patient outcomes? Will it, you know, it, if as long as you're using that litmus test and really saying, how do I understand the story of how that technology adoption will affect these things, you won't go astray. If you just say, oh, it's AI, and so therefore it's got to be better, um, you can sink a lot of money into something like that and never see the benefits of it. So keep the patient forefront, and UAE will stay out in the front. You know, in one of your slides, you actually showed technology advancement in surgery, uh, where microsurgery in the lungs use in precision without opening the mm -hmm. chest. Now, I'm sure this technology, and there's many other technology, how can we make the, the, the time from these being experimental or being used in selective places mm -hmm. to being open across the field? Not only the technology, but also the skill set of the healthcare workers to be able to do that. How can we shorten this time? I'm going to come back to education again, because really in a lot of the, of, of the adoption cycles of these things, it's you can make the technology, but training people to use it and getting teams to be really excellent at using it is often the gating um, step for being able to get wide adoption of a new technology. And we aren't structured as a healthcare or, or, or as, as a medical training world to teach people after they're already attendings. And so I'm excited about if we can build in all of the training for using a device into that device so that when you as a clinician have that device, it will teach you how to use it as you are going along and how to become excellent at it. This is where we start to be able to bring it out in parallel everywhere in the world. We stop being gated by that educational step. Thank you. In conclusion, today's lecture highlighted how technology has positively impacted medicine and healthcare by making it precise and accessible. Also, how the, uh, the integration of new technologies such as artificial intelligence and big data is expected to have to bring about significant changes in the decision-making process and also the error rates in medicine.